Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to talk about summer bedding. I'm just going to tell you how to plant it and I'm also going to tell you lots of different facts about summer bedding so you know all the different types of it and, and how to plant it together and create different planting schemes using it. So if this is going to focus mainly on bedding plants in borders. I've also made a previous video about bedding plants and planters. So if you want to see something more about planters and hanging baskets then you can watch that one. This focuses more on the, on the garden beds. So to begin with there's lots of different types of summer bedding and there's lots of different styles as well. So basically what is summer bedding? Summer bedding is plants that you put out just for a short period of time during the summer and you replace it normally every single year. Most of these plants are annual, they're only going to last one summer and the idea of summer bedding is it gives you a huge amount of colour in a small area or you can grow it in a large area as well but compared with most plants which are perennial and will flower maybe for one or two months a year, these will flower the whole summer long and they normally have a lot more colour, a lot more interest than most garden plants. So as I say there's many different types of summer bedding plants. It really depends on your personal preference what ones you want to grow. As I say there's there's lots of different types. I've got a few examples here. I've got Sinetti at the back which is a great specimen plant for the middle of your bed. I've got some African marigolds at the bottom here. These are good more as a middling plant or sometimes as a specimen as they do grow quite large. You can also grow some smaller plants. I've got an example on the left there which is the spring flowering but you can also use it as summer bedding if you're in a cooler climate which is violas and pansies. And then you've got lots of different options. There's Nemesia, Lobelia, Verbena, Petunias, the list goes on and on basically. There's hundreds of different types so depending on your preferences there's definitely a plant for you and definitely a, a plant that you will like. If you don't think you like summer bedding you just haven't found that the right variety of summer bedding yet. So as I say colour and style is personal preference. I tend to vary mine. I quite like purples and pinks but this year I've gone for much more of a yellow and orange theme. But as I say, there's not really any rules when it comes to it. Some people like a totally psychedelic effect where there's lots of different random colours just kind of jumbled together. Other people like to think about it quite carefully and have just certain colours or even like a rainbow effect where it changes as it goes across the garden. As when it comes to colours, there's not really any kind of rule. The same with plants as well. Just whatever you think looks best basically. But I will talk about some general rules just to help you with thinking about planning out the bedding and how to get the best from your display. So first of all, you want to think about your specimen plants. What a specimen plant is, is it's normally a larger plant, maybe more unusual, often more expensive as well. You just want one or two of them dotted around. If you planted these on mass, you wouldn't be able to get the full ex experience of them because they'd be crowded out and you're just going to have a lot of them. These plants look best on their own, planted individually. So these are often taller plants or what they call standard plants. Standard plants basically got a clear stem and it's got uh, lots of foliage or flowers on the top. Ones that work really well for this is the, the Sinetti you can see in the background there. Also several of the daisies you can grow as standards. In, in my personal garden I'm going to be using roses. You can use perennials as part as a bedding scheme. So I tend to use roses. This is a rose garden I have here. They tend to be my specimen plants. I then plant some other specimen plants in between the roses and they, I use dahlias for them. They have really big beautiful flowers and I find them they give a nice bit of height. But you don't have to use flowering plants either. You can use foliage plants as well. So one quite nice one for example is an Insetti morellii or you can use ricinus. I use ricinus and Insetti morellii quite often but anything with foliage you can also dot that in and just give a nice mixture to your garden and they work quite well as specimen plants. So as I say specimen plants are going to be your biggest plant, your most expensive normally and you just dot one or two of them around. If you have a, a central kind of area you tend to put them in the middle. If you have a bed which has a definite front and a back you would tend to put them at the back of the bed. I haven't really got a back or a front to my bed so I tend to put my specimen plants in the middle and that's what I'll be doing in this garden. So in this video I'm going to be putting in some dahlias. You won't really see them because they're still in the tuber so they haven't really come up yet but um, they will come up later. You will see my roses and I'm just going to be doing a pretty basic bedding scheme this year. I'm just going to be having roses and then a nice row of African marigolds as well. So after your specimen plants you want to think about your mid-sized plants. So what they tend to be is they often planted around your specimen plants or if you don't have specimen plants they can be used as specimen plants. So a good example of that would be my African marigolds here. They grow about two foot in height, sometimes three foot in height. That's a good kind of mid plant. You just kind of put them to kind of create less of a step between your specimen plants and your filler plants. And that leads me on to what a filler plant is. So the filler plants are basically what you're going to put on mass. They tend to be cheaper, smaller plants and they give the real kind of backdrop to the show. 
and if you choose them correctly they will highlight your specimen plants much better so it's good to contrast the color of your specimen plants with your filler plants so you might want to have a bed which is full of something for example let's say lobelia with a really dark purple flower you then want to highlight your specimen plant because you've got a dark flower you want the specimen plants to have a bright flower and you just swap that over say if you had as white verbena you then want a dark plant as a specimen plant such as your morelii or, or, or maybe even some canna lilies so as i say your, your filler plants are your main start style of the show you tend to grow them on mass big clumps together to give that nice kind of broad color blocks that you get in park style bathing shows I'll, I'll put some pictures up now when i was in taiwan they did that perfectly there really big wide areas lots of color that's what your filler is that's really what you see from a distance and then you've also got edging plants as well so the edging plants are really just to highlight the edges of your bedding scheme just to give a bit of de definition to it you can also use it to draw out writing or, or logos or even different interesting designs so the, the edging plants they need to be quite a difference in color from your filler plants they can be taller than them or lower than them filler plants tend to be quite low growing plants the edging plants as i say doesn't matter too much with height as long as they're not really tall and you just put them around the edge of your filler plants but you can also intersect them into the middle if you want to divide up different sections of filler plants so there's quite a bit you can do with them and that's just your edging plants again it doesn't matter so much the variety of the, the plant you're using when it comes to filler and edging plants it's just that with edging plants you tend to plant them in lines with filler plants you tend to do them in blocks so when it comes to looking for your plants you need to make sure that you get the right type so as I say there's lots of different varieties but of each species or each variety you also get a trading type or an upright type now this isn't as important for bedding schemes like this it's more important for for planters but just be aware if you get a trailing variety your trailing variety is going to be a much lower type it's going to kind of spread along the ground doesn't work so well in bedding schemes unless you want a really low mat forming plant so you want to look for your upright plants normally for bedding schemes that are out in the garden but just bear in mind there's upright varieties and trailing varieties so especially when you have plants like lobelia and petunias they all come in the two different types so make sure you get the type that's right for your situation so i'll now talk about when to plant your, your, uh, your summer bedding plants so you want to make sure that you plant them when the last risk of frost is gone the vast majority of summer bedding plants are tropical the reason they're tropical is because we need to grow them in the summer so they need to survive warm temperatures and a lot of the tropical plants as well they don't have any kind of dormancy they're just going to flower constantly non-stop give you a great display over the summer so you want to make sure when you're picking your plants you don't get them too early in the year when there's frost you need to plant them out once the last risk of frost is gone there's a few exceptions you could have plants like pansies and violas which can handle a little bit of frost and they can go out a bit earlier but the majority of summer bedding plants need to make sure it's planted up after the last frost and when it comes to planting them out if you have spring bedding i find there's a bit of an overlap so you can see in my garden now for example i've got a lot of this tall spring bedding this needs to come out before i put in the summer bedding because this is just going to shade everything out it's going to smother my other plants this needs to come out otherwise my summer plants aren't going to grow to their fullest extent but just underneath them you can see i've got down there some smaller spring bedding i've got some violas the violas they can stay i tend to plant in between the spring bedding because if i was to take them all out it would be quite empty as you can see the summer bedding is quite small when it starts and it isn't in flower so when you put it out you're not going to be able to see much of a display it can be a bit disappointing for the first few weeks until they start to grow so i like to plant in between my spring bedding so i've still got some color and then as it gets warmer in the summer and the spring bedding starts to die off i remove the spring bedding and that allows space for my summer bedding to continue to grow so i'll talk a little bit about pests luckily there's not too many pests when it comes to to bedding plants you might get a few aphids but generally by midsummer all the beneficial insects are out and about and you don't get too many problems with aphids the biggest problem you're probably going to get is slugs and snails so make sure you prepare for that i'm not going to go into detail about how to deal with slugs and snails in this video because it's quite a long complicated topic so you're best looking up online and other youtube videos about that but basically slugs and snails are going to be one of your biggest problems and also caterpillars as well in some areas of the world could be more of an issue also so now i'm going to talk about amending the soil before you plant now summer bedding plants because they grow so quickly and they flower so much over the summer 
They're very hungry plants. They need a lot of nutrition and a lot of water to perform their best. Otherwise, you're gonna be left disappointed. Your plants are gonna stay quite small and you're not gonna have a really colorful planting display where the plants fill out and you don't have any soil exposed. So you need to make sure that your soil is in tip-top condition. So to do this, what I would recommend doing is digging in lots of compost. Compost helps with moisture retention so you don't have to water as often as it holds more water than the soil does. And it also helps with nutrient retention. It acts as a buffer so when you feed your plants, the feed doesn't get washed out by the rain straight away. And it's easier for the plants to obtain that feed. So definitely add as much compost as you can feasibly afford or you seem reasonable for the amount of work. But the more compost, the better. As long as you're not getting more than about a third of compost in the soil compared with soil. You want about one third compost, two thirds soil. You don't really want any more than one third of compost. But generally, up to that limit, the more the better. And you also want to make sure you add lots of feed as well. So I tend to add a slow release feed at the beginning of the year, which is blood, fish and bone. That has a big boost of nitrogen at the beginning of the year, which helps with rapid growth. The nitrogen tails off and then the phosphorus and potassium kicks in over the summer and that helps really with giving lots of good flowering display as the nitrogen is more for the leaves. But what I also do, because they're such hungry plants, even with most slow release fertilizers, if you put a lot of it in, you're not gonna get enough for the whole summer. So what I do is I supplementary feed as well. I'll talk about this later on in the video about aftercare, but I also like to liquid feed just to make sure there's plenty of food for this plant the whole summer long. So I'd like to talk about a couple of things that you should do before planting your plants just to make sure your plants get the greatest chance of success. So the first thing is give them a good water, check the soil, see if it's light coloured, fill the pots, see if they're heavy. I would give them a good soak even if they are quite damp already. Make sure the plants are well watered. The reason for this is when you first plant them, they're going to have all their roots just in this small area, which is the size of their original pot. Even if your ground is damp, if this is very dry, the roots aren't really going to be able to spread out very quickly or take a few days. Also, the water doesn't always wick into this quickly enough from the existing soil, even if it is damp. So you want to make sure these are nice and damp because if you put them out on a hot sunny day, even with damp soil, the plants can dry out very quickly and get quite stressed. So make sure that you give your plants a good watering before planting them out. The next thing that's a good thing to do and is particularly important for plants which have large flowers like these African marigolds is to take off any existing flowers. I'm going to make a whole video about this later on which I'll be putting up on my YouTube but basically with these plants that have larger flowers, it takes a huge amount of energy to form these flowers and so instead of putting their energy into their roots and into leaves to form bigger plants, they're going to put most of their energy into the flowers and you're going to be left with quite a slow growing plant. It's going to take a while to get to a good size. So what I would recommend is just deadheading any of the flowers off the plants. Just cut them off just below where the flower bud is just before the new leaves and shoots come out. And it's up to you how many you cut off. I would say for maximum um, growth I would cut them all off any flowers you can see existing cut them off what this means is you won't have much of a display to begin with when you first plant your your bedding plants you're just gonna have lots of leaves they won't look like much but they'll give you much more growth in the long run if you've got the budget and you've got hundreds of bedding plants and you're planting them really close together you won't need to do this because your plants don't need to grow as much to fill out the space so you can just leave them on undead headed leave the flowers on them enjoy your, your display from the day one when you're planting them but if you're like me and you're a bit budget conscious and you're not going to plant them as close together, take all these flower buds off. That will help them to really get established faster. And this leads on to my next section, which is about cutting plants back and creating a bushier plant. So these African marigolds are pretty good. As you can see here, there's lots of side shoots coming up. So these are going to be nice bushy plants. They're not tall and leggy and these are going to grow really quite large. If this just had one shoot, what I would be doing is cutting the top of it off. That encourages lots of side branches to grow and you'll get a much larger plant in the long run. In the short run, your plant will be smaller. It will flower later as well. But in the long run, you're going to have a larger plant with a lot more flowers and it'll just fill more of your bed up. So I'll show you this example of cutting them back. These here are some lobelias which I cut back in a previous video and these have started to bush up quite nicely. As you can see there's only one or two flowers on them, they haven't really started flowering yet but with cutting them back they've got much bushier, going to have a lot more side growth and they're really going to fill out this tub much quicker than they would have otherwise. So in this next part of the video I'm going to show you how to plant your bedding plants but before I do that I'm just going to use my garden as an example of what I'll be doing this year. So this is how my beds currently look. As I say, there's too much of this large spring bedding that needs to come out. So I'll be taking out most of my old spring bedding, just be leaving the roses, the violas. I'm also leaving those unusual cabbage plants at the end there because I actually have a plan for them as well. So it will be a little bit of a strange bedding plan, not the most formal. 
I'll show you some pictures from some previous years that I did in this garden and also another garden that I used to look after much more formal style bedding that I used to do this one's going to be a bit informal this year but unusual but anyway I'll get this ready get it tidied up and then I'll show you how to plant up your summer bedding plants so I'm now going to tell you how to plant your bedding plants so first of all you need to take them out of the container more recently they're coming in these pet plastic containers but they also sometimes come in the polystyrene containers or you might get them in individual pots but what you want to do is you want to get them out here safely without damaging the plant now these are quite robust these African marigolds so I can actually sometimes just pull them out by the stem and it's not a problem but for more sensitive plants and as a, as a good general rule what you want to do is just gently loosen the the, um, the pot by squeezing it on its side and then you want to push it up from the bottom make sure it's loose if it's one of the polystyrene ones you'll often find you push up there the next extra weak part of polystyrene there and it'll snap and it'll pop out quite easily so once you've got that loosened then just gently pull it out use gravity to assist you so put it upside down take most of the weight of it with the compost have your fingers either side of your plants like this so that you're not carrying the plant by its stem you carry it by the compost and that's the safest way to take it out of the pot if you were to hold it by the stem there's a real risk that you could actually damage it so quite often as well when you're putting the plants out you'll find you'll have two plants in one pot what you can do is just gently pull them apart just like this now it's quite easy with a thicker stem plant like this but if it has a thinner stem you might want to break apart the compost before you pull them apart and that way you can double the number of plants you have if you're quite lucky and as I say you have some double plants inside some of your pots so the next thing to do is to plant them just plant them at the same depth that they were in their original pot so before you plant them out it's good to actually place them where you want them roughly so you can rearrange them when you do this if you can hopefully they're in individual pots if they're not they'll be and their roots will be bare like this one here what you want to do is quite quick with this because if they have bare roots and it's strong sunshine the sun will dry out the roots and damage them but if they're in individual pots it's a lot easier so you want to place them out in your bed get your your layout sorted and you can always rearrange and kind of redo it as you're going along to make it easier but laying them out first is the best way of doing that take a mental note of where it is then dig out a suitable size planting hole just put your soil on the side make sure the soil is nice and loose this is a perfect time to add some slow release fertilizer or some compost unless unless you've already done it to the whole bed place your plant inside make sure the soil is at the right level then fill it back in with soil and just gently firm down using your fingers So that's how you plant them. You want to give them a little bit of a firm just to make sure that they don't get blown over in the wind, but you don't want to push down too hard so that you compact the soil. So just give it a gentle firming in with your fingers. You don't want to like punch it down or put all your weight on top of it. And when it comes to spacing, it really depends on the plant and your budget as to how much spacing you have. I don't have a lot of money when it comes to buying lots of plants. So what I do is I have quite a bit of spacing. I take the flowers off, increase the, the speed of growth by giving them a liquid feed that is high in nitrogen at this time of year that way i can give them more spacing and i'm happy waiting till the end of summer until i get a really good flowering display but if you've got a bit more money what you can do is just buy a lot more plants cram them in really close together and you can actually plant up an instant bedding display on day one and have a great display straight away but as i say it's very uneconomical to do that so what I tend to do is give them a bit more space, allow them to grow, and that way in, a, in a one or two months I'll have a nice display. That's all my bedding now planted up. As you can see, because I used the economical method, what that means is that it doesn't look like much at the beginning. The plants are so small, they just kind of get lost in the beds, which is why I like to keep some of my spring bedding still going. So I've got a little bit of color. You can see here, tiny little bedding plants, but these will grow quite fast as I say. So I'll just talk about aftercare now. So when it comes to aftercare, make sure it's really well watered when you first plant it. Then you want to make sure that it's well watered throughout the whole growing season. Bedding plants don't have very deep roots and most bedding plants aren't very good at dry conditions. So you want to make sure they're well watered whenever there's any dry spells. There's a couple of exceptions. If you have quite a dry climate, you can grow things like gazinias or misanthemums, and they are quite drought tolerant, so they're quite good plants to go with in drier locations. So the only other thing you need to do is to keep them well fed throughout the summer. So at the beginning of the year, if you're doing the economical method like me, and you want them to grow really quickly, give them a balanced feed or a feed that's high in nitrogen. That'll make them grow really fast, start to fill up the space well. 
but for the rest of the year or if you just planted them quite densely give them tomato feed that's a feed that's high in potassium that will really help with the flower production that will encourage lots of flowers and you won't be left with lots of leaves and you can deadhead as well so it depends i don't always deadhead everything if it's something that's easier to deadhead with large flowers i do tend to deadhead it the smaller flowers they can be quite tricky and, and a lot of time and maintenance to keep them deadheaded but we're taking off the old flowers. What it does is it ensures the plant puts all its energy into new flowers and continuous flowering. If you let the flowers stay, the old flowers will then set seed and then a lot of the energy from the plant will go into the seeds and less energy will go into new flowers. So if you can, deadhead as much as you can, take off all the old flowers. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. The summer bedding plants are quite strong growing plants and they will keep flowering quite well, even if they're not deadheaded. They just have a slightly less of a flowering display. So that's all for this video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful for, for summer bedding plants. I've also made one about summer bedding that's a bit more focused on growing plants in containers. And I've also made some previous videos as well about spring bedding and winter bedding.